This is Halia Dawnblade, and in short, her backstory is that she's the leader of the slum section of Fair Farrick, but she is widely known as the Skaven Slayer. Little progress was made apart from painting a few parts of Halia herself and some free guild soldiers, but as soon as I seen the Lord Leantis model, a light bulb went off my head, a conversion light bulb. I really like the idea of characters having an alternate model, like Radicar the Wolf from Curse City has two forms, a Space Marine Captain can be in Terminator armor or on a bike. In this case, it's as simple as having an option of an infantry general on foot or on horseback. Some of this conversion is going to be based on the Lord Leantis kit. In fact, this conversion is going to be 90% him, but that's okay because it's an amazing looking model. But there are a few things that need to be changed, like the Imperial Guard symbols. But the most important part is the head, that has to be switched out to a female head. And I think I have the perfect kit to look through for it later on. But the first thing I got to do was build Leantis, which is very straightforward. I thought it was going to be one of those models where the legs are going to be a part of the horse, but it was two separate pieces, which is going to make things a lot easier. I'm going to sort out the big chest piece on the horse first, because it's something that's going to be tricky to change out. Going through my bits box, I was getting a little bit worried because I had very little Cities of Sigmar's bits. Plenty of arms and guns, but nothing that could go on the chest piece. But then I remembered I had bits left over from the Carl Franz deck clock kit. And what do you know, I found not one, but two chest pieces I can work with. After having a look with it on the horse, there's a problem. It's clearly too big. Which is unfortunate because it's a really nice looking piece. I could switch it out to the other piece but I really wanted this one to work. So I got my hobby knife and clippers and started picking off bits to make it fit. It fits much better now but I need to bend it around the chest piece. So after having a quick look online, the best thing I could do right now is to put it in some boiling water to make it a bit more flexible. After removing the wings and the skull from the original chest plate, I glued a new bit in but after it was dried I realised that I used too much glue. I think super glue would have been the better option, so I'm going to have to clean it up as best I can later on. On the back of the horse there are some big symbols that I need to look at, but I think I could get away with leaving some of them as they are, because some of the older free guild stuff has parts that are very similar looking to them, so for now I'm just going to leave one of them as it is. I'm going to leave the horse aside for now and I'm going to make a start on Halia. This is a pretty much straightforward build, but there are two key parts that I need to change. The first is the sword. Because she's known as the Skaven Slayer, I wanted something to reflect on that. Looking through my bits, I find a Plague Monk sword that has a Skaven symbol on it. This bit is perfect, but when I compare the size of the blade to the arm, it is a little bit chunkier than I thought it was going to be. I have this Death Runner blade as backup, and it is a much fancier looking blade, but I love this Skaven symbol and the chunky one. Instead of clipping the whole sword off as planned, I cut the blade off and I leave the guard intact, and I'm hoping that it fits perfectly on the round part. I learned my lesson before so I'm not going to glue anything down yet, so I'm going to fit it with blue tack first. I think I'm going to refer to Sword as the Skaven Slayer and not the nickname for Halia. I think it suits it much better. After dry fitting and making a few little changes, the sword looks great and I glue it on. Next is probably the most important part, the head. Through my whole collection I struggle to find any female heads and without it the project is doomed. But I started looking through my 40k stuff and I managed to find the perfect solution, Sisters of Battle. There was a lot of Sisters of Battle with this magazine and I had plenty of head choices. With the heads on and the rest of the body put together, I have last look around my bits box for any last minute additions I can fit in. In the unlikeliest of places, I find a bit from Blood Bowl Orcs, a chess piece that fits perfectly to change her armour up. At this point I'm starting to think if I don't stop adding pieces now, I might just overdo it. So I'm going to start putting the primer on. After the primer was dry, I was hoping that it covered the glue enough so it wouldn't stick out, but it didn't come out so well. So I'm going to have to clean it up a bit. I have this rotary drill kit that finally came in handy, and I started to clean up the rough glue parts as best I can. I drilled some lines down the horse's side armour to make it look like wood. Will it work? Fingers crossed when it comes to painting it will. After sorting out my paints, it's time to start getting some of them on the models. I really like the look of the white mechanical horse, so I stuck with the idea of keeping it, even though white is a tricky colour to paint. To start off, I based the horse with a couple of thin layers of wraith bone. For the silver parts, I went to a lead belcher. As nice as the gold looks on the box, her setting is that she's from part of the city that has limited resources, so very little gold, but plenty of silver. But the small decorative parts that do have gold are based on retributor armour. For parts of the hoofs, I used a bad and black. The makeshift wood was painted with scrag brown, a much brighter brown than I'd usually go with. 
Although there was very little on the horse, blue was going to be a big part of the model, so I chose Calgar blue for the blue parts on it. After that, I finished a few miscellaneous bits by using Gotar brown on the leather straps, Rune Lord brass on the cowbell looking thing, and Pallid Witch flesh on the dead body parts. The final base colour was Mephiston red for the horse's eye. Moving on to Halia, I started off by painting her clothes, and I wanted them to look dark, but not a bad and black dark, so I went with Dark Reaper instead. Lead Belcher was used for her armour and the metal parts on her legs. The Sigmar symbols on her chest were painted with Retributor armour. The horns on the armour were painted with Wraithbone. Now for the big part, the cape and the robes, and these colours represent the city of Fair Fairfairy, so I went with the city's colours of white and blue. The outside of the cloak was painted with multiple thin layers of Calgar blue. For the inside, it was again multiple thin layers of Wraithbone. I had some footage missing for the glove and her hair, but I used a bad and black for them. For her face, I always struggled to pick a colour for pinkish kind of skin tones, but I just went straight in with a couple of thin layers of Kislev flesh. Now for my favourite part of painting, the shading. It's the part that lets you see the model really starting to come together. Going back to the horse, the first thing I wanted to do was to shed the white, so I added a small bit of lamb and medium to apothecary white and started to layer it on. This contract works really well on white, but adding too much on can almost give it a light grey effect, so I make sure that this only happens in the recesses. Then I went with the usual suspects of Nullin Oil on the silver, Agrax Earthshade on the brown parts, and a thin down Drakenhof Nightshade on the blue. For Halia, it was pretty much the same with Apothecary White on the white parts, Nullin Oil on the silver and black parts, Agrax Earthshade on the gold, leather and the horns, and Drakenhof Nightshade was spread out over the blue. Now it was the tidy up time for the white and blue. The Apothecary White pulled up a little too much, so I started to layer up a thin down rate bone to cover it up. The blue needed a little bit more work, so it was a couple more layers to fix it back, especially on the edges with Calgar Blue. With everything dry, it's time to add the finishing touches. I start layering on pallid witch flesh over the bigger parts of the horse and along the sharper edges of the legs and the tails and the rivets. Stormhole silver was added to the silver, bronze and gold parts and I got a case of the shaky hands at this point. So some of the edges weren't as smooth as I wanted it, but it turned out okay. For the blue, I used rust grey to brighten up the edges. To finish the body parts, I went over them with plague bearers flesh and then with gullum and flesh for that rotten flesh look. Flesh, flesh, a lot of flesh. The wooden part turned out okay at best, and I wasn't really sure about what to do with it. In the end, I just dry brushed some Tyrant Skull over it and shaded it with Antonian Cami shade for that oldish wood look. Although it turned out very subtle in the end. For the highlights on Halia, I started off with the silver and gold parts with Stormhost Silver. Then I moved on to her clothes and her black gloves. I highlighted them with Administratum Grey. For all the white parts, I added pallid witch flesh along the edges. I almost forgot about her face at this point, so I added some Reichlin flesh shade while I worked on the other highlights. It was rust grey then to brighten up the edges of her cloak back up. With the face shade dry, I carefully went over the higher parts with Kislev flesh. One of the last parts to finish was the horns, so I added some pallid witch flesh just onto the tips. And all that was left to do then was the Skaven Slayer sword. I really didn't know what to do at this point. Give it a glow effect, make it rusty. I really didn't know. I had spent way too long on the model than I originally planned for. So in the end, I just based it with Lead Belcher, gave it a Null and Oil shade, and added some Drakenhof Nightshade into the lower parts and started to blend it up towards the tip to give it that blue shimmer look, and finish it off with a highlight of Stormhole Silver on the edges. For the base, I kept it simple. I glued on some sand and gravel, followed by a base colour of Steel Legion Drab. When dry, I shaded it with Skeleton Horde and dry brushed it back up with Dawnstone. And with that, Halia Dawnblade is ready to defend the 8th district of Fair Farrig. Although it took a little longer than I had planned for, I really enjoyed bringing this model to life. From struggling to find City of Sigmar bits, to adding the file and highlight, this model is just the very beginning of my Cities of Sigmar army. I have the new army box to make, and one more conversion idea for a unit of free guild cavaliers that were hand chosen by Halia herself. But if you like this video and you like the work that's been done on it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Once again, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.